We're talking future versus Sierra. Rachel Dolezal has a new book on race, and the cast of Autograph is in the house. All that and more on Black Hollywood Lives this week. You are tuned in to Black Hollywood Live this week. Hey! Oh! <laughs> hey! What's up, everybody? Welcome to Black Hollywood Live this week. We play a We Are Family. I see you, Rachel. You got your moves going on. I'm on Rachel, the who says hard. she has no rhythm, no, has got much rhythm right now. I'm on the off beat, but I have to try. That's right. You know what? It's just about moving the shoulders, you know, just moving to the side, to the side, to the side. We are family today, though, because we got a full house, a family up in the studio. It's a family reunion straight up. At the picnic and everything. But we're going to start off our family with Courtney Stewart. Hi, guys. <laughs> I was waiting for something, you know, a little bit energetic, go, Courtney. Well, you caught me just as I was about to drink, and then Sip I was like, hey, guys, and then I was struggling between guys and y'all, because usually I say y'all, and then it was, just didn't come away. So. <laughs> okay. Okay. Right. No pressure. No judgment. Hey, no pressure. Hello. Hey, we, y'all. We got DJ Jesse J. <laughs> What's up? We got Rachel True. Still looking for the beat. <laughs> <laughs> Still looking for the beat. You can catch it actually Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Right. Thank you. No <laughs> and joining us today, we have the cast of Autograph with us in the house. I'm going to say everyone's name and hopefully not mess anyone's name up today. <laughs> Steven Tingus is with us. We have Lolia Etomi. I like just saying that, <laughs> Etomi. She's from London. <laughs> and we got Kier Thyrus with us today. Welcome, welcome. Thank welcome. you for joining us. Woo. We're excited. Having. We're going to talk to you guys a little bit more at the end of the show about Autograph, your TV series. We're going to go through the topics first for everyone who's listening out there and then get into the nitty gritty with everybody. Nitty-gritty. We're going to start off right now with the trending topics with DJ Jesse J. Boom. So Black Twitter was upset, y'all. They always mad. Now. <laughs> they always they mad. Y'all. What? Well, they, they, a recent study published by the American Journal of Public Health found that delinquent non-Hispanic whites are more likely to abuse hard drugs such as cocaine and opiates than their black counterparts. The study took place over 12 years and found that the rates of hard drug abuse was highest among non-Hispanic whites, followed by Hispanics and then African Americans. Uh, The research found that whites were more than 30 times likely to have a cocaine disorder, use disorder, 50 times more likely to develop an opiate disorder, uh, and 18 times more likely to have a PCP use disorder than blacks. Black Twitter was like, duh. <laughs> <laughs> like, I duh, and wow. we're all of us in jail for it. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, I mean, the study came out, Black Twitter dragged everything about it, and anyone who was on Twitter promoting oh, this, really, I mean, they came up with some pretty funny tweets, too. <laughs> but uh, what do you guys think? I mean, I'm not surprised by this. We've, I think we've kind of had this subject on the show before, but I mean, obviously some of these drugs are also more of the high-end drugs, and, and as far as like more of like a, with social class, they are in maybe more rich kids may be more in tune to be able to buy these drugs. Mm-hmm. So I'm not surprised by that being not, you know, specific to non-African, or to non-African Americans, you know, I'll say that much. So. Well, and the, I read a study, too, where the p- police basically admitted we were told to um, yeah. target African-American gotcha. and, and Latin communities, ethnic communities, yeah. for drug use to ignore the drug use in the white communities. So, like, you know, there could be a white teenager with a needle hanging out of their arm. They're probably not going to get arrested, but a black kid's going to get put in jail. You got a dime sack? He's going to get put in jail <laughs> for a joint. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, this is nothing shocking, um, mm-hmm. and black Twitter's kind of right to say, uh, duh. Uh, right. People, but that's what's exciting about these times, that this information is coming out and coming out so quickly like right. back before the internet it would have taken three month lead time to get yeah. this information in a magazine so right. if True. the magazine would want to publish, even publish it, it. Exactly. right right because other people are involved in the magazine exactly right. but sho- not shocking yeah. also because all the other thing like a lot of the times my um my Caucasian friends that I went to college with will say, Rachel, why do you look younger than me? And I mean, my standard line these days is like, because I didn't do heroin in college. <laughs> <laughs> That'll help. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you, <laughs> Thank you, Jesus, that I didn't Thank you, Jesus, I couldn't better. afford any college. No, I, if you don't do hard drugs, your skin holds up a little better, people. Right. FYI, okay. the more you know. That's true. Uh, there you go. Well, well, I have a quick question for Lolia. You know, I just want you to say your name a couple times, too, because you are obviously from yeah. the UK. <laughs> Are there, do those problems exist in the same way over where you're from as well? Because we get it a lot, obviously, in the states of, you know, you see the, the difference of how <coughs> things have happened with African Americans. But what about where you're from? You what's know, it like over there? What's it like over there for you? Get your, you get killed in Nigeria, right? She's originally from Nigeria, yes, correct? I, but yes, she's a Londoner. I, but there, it's completely different. You don't even have marijuana yeah, in um, London. Yeah, I don't really think 
It, well, okay, no, we do. <laughs> uh, I had a twist. They lied. They lied <laughs> to me. Then. Then. Oh, okay. um, I don't really think you know hard drugs is much of a problem. Even though I did read a few weeks ago that they found some meth labs, but oh. then it was being run by Mexicans in Nigeria. Oh wow! So, and it was being run to be shipped out somewhere else. Oh, <laughs> so, wow. interesting. So um, yeah, I don't really. I know, like, when I went to school in Nigeria for a bit and Kenya for a bit, and drugs weren't really an issue. I right. think people you'd see people with weed every once in a while, but even then, that was exciting to them because that was about <laughs> as hard as it got. Right, right. Oh. But, um, <laughs> then, yeah, um, I think at Cambridge, everyone, I don't think people wanted to risk <laughs> their academics yeah. by, you know, doing anything crazy. But then you did hear a lot about um, all those drugs that help you concentrate. Uh, oh. But yeah, like I pharmaceutical, <laughs> exactly, that are legal yeah. tropics and everything. Yeah. Like people would have used Adderall and yeah. things right. like that. Speed and you know, those type of oh. things yeah. to stay away. Yeah. 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 Ooh, and at like parties and events, people liked MDMA. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Don't yeah. the kids call? What do they call, kids call that? Like when I was growing up, it was X. Now yeah. MDMA. it's Mo no Molly. 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 I was at a party yeah. and then you're rolling with Molly and I was like, yeah. who's yeah. Molly? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to find her. You don't want to be in a rap song. <laughs> you, you better watch out. <laughs> um, all right, so on the other side of this, Erica Badu, before I tell this story, Erica Badu has had this beef with uh, Azalea Banks. They've squashed it on Twitter, so thank you for being just grown women and doing Yay. that. Um, but beyond that, Erica Badu had some things to say um, on Monday night about her controversial statements about rape culture and sexuality. She basically tweeted that she agreed with an article in which she feels that school should require girls to wear longer skirts, more so that the adult male teachers aren't turned on by the young women. So she feels across the board that, you know, I she agrees with having school uniforms. Um, she feels that it's a distraction. Uh, different types of clothing can be a distraction for heterosexual men. And we live in a day and age where society is so such a big sex drive that she feels we need to kind of go back to a moral state. Well, that's the philosophy behind wearing a burqa in, in the Middle East. Is to, you women should cover up so the men don't get hard-ons. Um, but here's, I actually think with here, when you parse what she actually said, said. I kind of agree. Not necessarily that we should wear long skirts in school, but what she's saying is we have to understand that we live in a culture where things can happen. Hypersexual. That's hypersexualized. When I was coming up, my, my parents or people made it clear to me, like, you don't go to a man's house at midnight unless you want to be with him because there's a chance you're going to have to fend something off or you, you might actually be rich. You know what I mean? But girls today are like, no, I'm, I'm sexually free. I can go wherever I want and I can go to his house at 1 a.m. And if he, that's on him. So I think Erica, who's also Gen X like I am, is kind of saying we have a responsibility as women to understand the world we live in. What do yeah. you think, Courtney, as women? Like, I mean, I wasn't that opposed to what she was saying. I mean, overall, it's easy to look at it and be like, oh my God, I'm a woman and I'm not responsible for what a man is going to choose to do. No, I'm not responsible for what a man chooses to do, but I am responsible for knowing where I am and knowing what I'm doing. That would be like if I, like, obviously I go to a bar. I don't just take a drink from anybody. Right. That's not because I put the responsibility of that drink on whoever's handing it to me. I put that responsibility on myself because I know that there are people out there that are predators, so I should do certain things that I can do to alleviate that. Do I think right. it's it's sort of treading in the waters of the whole rape culture and blaming the woman and that thing? Yes, I do, but I also recognize we live in a patriarchal society where that right. culture exists, and right, if true. there's anything that I can do, then I will do to it protect myself, to protect myself right. and everybody gets to set what those limits are. So I'm not going to judge the girl that decided to go to homeboy's house at one o'clock in the morning and whatnot. But I, I, I'm not opposed to what she said it's because it was based on, there was a school that was uh, oh. changing their rule of how long the skirts needed to be. And so she was just agreeing with that school making that decision. I think it's a big leap because she was talking about the teachers and yeah, right, but, if she'd left that out, if she hadn't mentioned the teachers. But at the same time, I mean, we got some sketchy ish going on in this. But the teachers is what bugged right me up most. I'm like, fire them. Right. Like, that's why right. are we Honestly, even like? That's what I'm why is that something has to happen know, for like, them to get fired? So you're so. But I don't think the longer skirts is going to solve that. Yeah, right. That's my, me like, neither. In that situation, yeah. I don't think. But the broader question, I think she was right. I don't think in that specific situation, a longer skirt at school is going to do anything right. for somebody lusting after. Kier, do you think that longer skirts should be put on on young women? in school? Um, well, I think on both sides, you know, uh, men and, or 
boys and girls, you know, should dress appropriately for school. Right. Um, yeah, obviously, it, we are in a hypersexualized culture, and and it is a rape culture where most of the, most of the time when women are raped, the women are blamed for wearing a certain kind of clothes. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, at that age, at that young age, you know, I, I don't think kids, boys or girls, should be wearing any kind of like sexual suggestive clothing anyway. But is a short skirt on a girl sexual, or is it just a short skirt that is sexualized be- by it's like other people pants. looking at her? Right. Exactly. I mean, I guess it's, how, it's, it's uh, and all in how you look at it. But um, you know, it doesn't. You know, an, an, an ounce of prevention um, <coughs> is better than a pound of cure. You know what I mean? Hmm, that's, um, I like that and answer. like I said, it's like it's not. You know, rape. You know, a man raping a woman. It is entirely the man's fault. You know, let's not, let's put that right. You know, to bed right there. Uh, however, like she said, it's like, you know, you, you know, protect yourself. Right. You know, you're in a, a situation, you don't know what, what these men are thinking, what they're doing, uh, how they're acting. And so, you know, you protect yourself. Keep yourself, you know, uh, show who you are. You know what I'm saying? Keep it like, covered. Keep yeah. it covered. You know what I mean? Covered. To a certain degree. I mean, be free, be who you are, but like, you know, don't. I think it is important yeah. that girls realize <clears throat> that we do have to watch it would be great if we lived in an ideal world where we didn't we could run around naked and you never had to worry about mm. that but you do actually like i know when i was a freshman at NYU and i was 17 and this is very common with a lot of women in america i had a date rape situation i didn't because what happened was i threw i was so drunk i threw up on him and that's, that, <laughs> that stopped it yeah, okay. that's the oh, uh, God, god's honest truth yeah. and here's the thing the guy was not actually a horrible horrible person he was a drunk 18 year old boy who was Aggressive. again Way too aggressive. Didn't have my permission. I was like, n- but I had never really drunk before. So, y- like, I and I'm a pretty smart girl, and ended up in that situation. I, and most women I know, I would say, seven out of ten women I know have been in that situation yeah. and actually had it go further, you yeah. know, n- than what what I went through. So it is up to us to go. Oh, even a nice guy in the in drunk or this or that or a nice teacher or whatever, you catch them on the wrong day. We have to watch our backs. Right. Well, I just think it's interesting yourself. too, though, with what Erica's saying because of the fact that we are also. So as, as we all know, in a time where sex tapes are on everybody's <laughs> phone, there's new pics on everybody's phone. So oh, wouldn't that really? stuff need to be st- well? Not everyone. What do you got? <laughs> I don't have it. Uh, don't, don't check my phone. Uh, you may <laughs> go through my. Let me delete a couple things real quick. No, I'm just joking. Um, but you know, we're at that. We're at that stage where kids are so used to that that I'm surprised that that she would make that statement to go back. It's almost like, can yeah. you? Will that matter when we are still in a state where people can so have so much social media access to things? Will changing a skirt really change anything as far as the, the sexualization of things? You know. Well, it'd be great if we were having a conversation about um, men and maybe uh, you know sensitivity training for men rather than girls. Where you put a longer skirt on? It's about you know um, retraining. I think men, American, or just men in the world, to understand that's not okay right, to to do that as opposed to you have to change women. We you know. I'm Hi. Hey, we, got <laughs> we have another cast member that just joined us. If you're, if you're Autographs in. the series. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Nasia. <laughs> Nasia. Nasia Jansen. Yes. Nice to, nice to see you and have you join us today. And thank you for coming in. <laughs> can, I, can I just follow up on this and say she's the mother of several daughters, I think, right? Yeah, she has so, two daughters. So there is a sensitivity that she has to this issue that maybe I don't, as, yeah. as not being a mother, you don't have kids either. So I, I understand as a mother why she's sort of saying that, but that's, that is a little sad. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, well, I, well, go, Erica. She's standing for it. So. <laughs> I, mean, I, I do think it's a slippery slope once it is. you start to... I don't think if someone's a rapist, two inches in your skirt isn't going to be Change the difference it. between them trying right. to rape you or not. And I think if you start saying, you know, okay, <coughs> girls, you know, you have to wear skirts a certain length, then where do you draw the line? Because it's quite subjective as to what someone else finds sexual or not. So right, there's like spaghetti but straps. and like, Exactly. So yeah. I, I think so that 90s. for spaghetti someone straps. in a position of responsibility, <laughs> you know, nice, I do understand protecting yourself, but you do need to be careful about kind of crossing the line into victim blaming, especially when it concerns young girls and teachers. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. I totally agree. I agree. Absolutely. I agree. But I will say too that I think specifically because we're talking about young girls, I think that we obviously sex I think we sexualize our young women way, way yeah. too soon. Yeah. So Honey in my blue. opinion, if they in sweats and skirts to their knees, I'm totally fine with it until they've embraced because I can remember growing up and when you start developing and like not really knowing how to navigate the attention you start to get right. with yeah. especially if you do it earlier. And I think that 
I'm not saying dress, you know, as uh, I don't know, like the old school, like, like Mormon, like prairie outfit. dresses. <laughs> but <laughs> being, but like I wasn't allowed to wear a two piece bathing suit until I was right. 18 years old because it ex- specifically is meant to accentuate the curves of your body and to separate, <laughs> and it's sexual. So my dad thought, like, put on a full one piece bathing suit until you're ready to receive that attention, or at least that you're comfortable in your own skin enough right. that when you are getting that attention as an adult, right. then you're making your own choices. Obviously, if a pedophile is coming after a little girl, we can't do nothing. Can't. Like, yeah, the, yeah, her yeah. skirt not going to do doesn't anything. matter. Right. But I do think it's sort of a, a way to sort of give girls an opportunity to just grow into their own bodies and into their minds and marrying those together before having to, like, look like Kim Kardashian yeah. at 13 yeah. years old. It is a confusing time, I think, for young girls because something someone like a Kim can get famous off a sex tape. And that mm-hmm. is so different than how I, I mean, when I was coming up, Vanessa Williams had her crown taken away from her from Miss America because she had yeah. tardy pictures. I yeah. mean, there, there wasn't even any penetration. It was just an S&M shoot. Mm. I'm like, just. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> yeah. those, those pictures were pretty risque. Just, I, 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 didn't I, really I saw were those. They? Yeah, I, I saw them recently. They were, see, oh. they were pretty. Yeah, like no, because they were talking. Didn't they give her back her crown? So some of those pictures resurfaced on Google. I'll put it like that. So you yeah. accidentally, yeah. accidentally yeah. pushed yeah. Vanessa Williams and typed her name in new <laughs> photos. Gotcha. But or like Madonna yeah. in a bra was shocking back then, and now <laughs> that's, that would be chased. No. Compared yeah. to now, <laughs> literally, there are fourteen-year-olds on Instagram like in right. their underwear right. and posing well, in front saying. of mirrors well, and things like point. that. Yeah. So like, I totally think that like maybe that I don't know school. Only obviously they got some parents that ain't worried about them either, so they need to figure that out. I don't know. It's a mess. Yep, that's all I got for (laughs) y'all. It's a mess. That's all you got. Well, I got more mess for y'all. So we've been talking about Future and Sierra probably for like a year and a half now. Yes. (laughs) I'm pretty sure this is the third time we've covered them. Um, So as we know, about a month and a half ago, uh, Sierra just had it. She couldn't deal with it anymore. And she filed a $15 million defamation lawsuit against Future for the things that he said after the holidays about her parenting and about being a horrible person and that she wasn't letting him see the baby. So she filed that lawsuit. We were expecting the countersuit to come and to come and to come. Well, guys, it has arrived. The countersuit was filed last week. And essentially, it was kind of vague. But basically, his argument is that there could be no defamation because she ain't nobody no more. Nobody okay. cares. And he called her last album a flop. <laughs> and he said that. I liked it. Bitter party of two. <laughs> <laughs> and he also basically said that um, the reason that, I mean, there could be no defamation because her career is nothing at this point And nothing that he said would have destroyed anything that she had going on. And she would like, he would like her to pay his law, his legal bills from all this crap being happening and whatnot. But she ain't nothing, right? So she, how she got that money? I mean, she got some money. I mean, I, I still okay. feel like he's saying too much. You know what I mean? He, he's still saying, he still keeps going back and forth. Well, he had it. to give an answer in his law. Yeah, he, he, he didn't tweet this. He trashes it wasn't a tweet. <laughs> this was from his legal filing. We're, too, we're so litigious. I, I would mean, have my on, lawyer just make all the statements at this time. I'm mad. I wish that like a judge could take the, like even when Sierra filed the lawsuit, I wish he could be like, no, bye. Right. You're not using my right. taxpayers' money to come up in here talking this nonsense. Right, like, this is ridiculous, this, isn't it? It's, Wait, when was this filed? Ridiculous. He, last week, he just filed. So, okay, so if you, I don't know if you saw it, but on the Billboard uh, nominations, Sierra and Ludacris uh, eh. gave all the nominees out. And so it came to the hip-hop category, and Sierra was like, uh, best hip-hop goes to Drake. Uh, we have Drake, Fetty Wap, Future. <laughs> and the uh, you can hear all the producers shit. in the back like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like she wouldn't she even say and his then name. She, she finished the, with the last two people. Silento, and then it was just so funny though. But now it makes Honestly. sense why she did it because this just Ted came out. Does it keep your well, personal business? I would to say it would have been better if she so just right. said his name. And just kept it moving. It's her kid's you know name. I mean? You just act like you don't have to say it. Yeah, exactly. Every day. Oh, wait, her child is the same. Her child's <laughs> name's Future. Yeah. Baby Future. Oh, right. I did not know that. <laughs> now, what do you think about all this? <laughs> have you been following this story between Sierra and I Future? I mean, like, I remember Sierra from when I was. Um, Younger, like when I was a kid, I always listened to her music. <laughs> so she's team uh, future. <laughs> she's team future. She's like, she ain't nothing now. <laughs> she's like, she ain't nobody no more. I remember her back. I'm gonna say that was shade, right? <laughs> that was shade. That was, little, that was a little bit of shade. <laughs> No, you said you used to listen to her and uh, what? Uh, back in Germany. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah, she, she she used to be back in Germany. Okay. And uh, I loved her music, but then when I moved to the America about five years ago, I. 
I stopped hearing about her. She, I feel like she yeah. was bigger overseas. Yeah. Though. Well, plus she yeah. went more fashion too in the last yeah. five years. So her music was. I, I couldn't name one Sierra song. Steven's got, <laughs> <laughs> Steven's got <laughs> Sierra in his car. <laughs> I know Steven, <laughs> Steven got Sierra in his car. Look, he was already moving yeah. his shoulders. What do you think about all this? Sierra's big on the East Coast. She is. Yeah. She is. In DC. Oh, I yeah, because you're from the southern, yeah. yeah. Right, I worked in D.C. Okay. okay. Somebody, yeah. can, can somebody sing a bar of one of her songs? My not my goodness, not my goodness. My goodness, my goodness. Thank you. The, but that's all she had, she had, had, I bet, that's her song, which is, which, I, mean, I bet, about future. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's recent. She literally wrote an entire song like I bet you stop loving me. The whole thing but was just basically like against future. She didn't say future. She didn't say future. I bet you stop loving. Like she wasn't specific. But so it could have been week you <laughs> gonna leave your man. You gonna drop this whole album that insinuates you talking about. I wish there was a judge that could throw that shit out. <laughs> to be like, no, this is ridiculous and absurd. It's like. Why is it our business? Well, that's exactly. what I, yeah. Because no, they I make it. Well, they make it our business though, because they put all their stuff out. So the, she's they make songs yeah. about yeah. it. Do they, you guys think this is just this is a publicity yeah. thing? Oh, like yeah. because it tells oh, both yeah. of both oh, of yeah. them get in the press every day. We talk about them now, yeah. and so, they're yeah. they're fighting yeah. about who's doing it for publicity, and it's like both. You're of you both see, my conspiracy theory is that they're working together on the low just to keep that's, their names out there. I think and that was and, and that this is all a hoax. That's what I'm wondering. Playing That's right what I feel about Black China and Rob right now. Oh, uh, I, yeah. absolutely. Oh. Yeah, it absolutely. seems kind of fake, that marriage. But I love they... them. <laughs> I do. I think they're the most authentic Kardashian situation <laughs> in here. I think it's Are they married? Are they married? Engaged. Oh. Engaged. They're engaged. But they were just together for like a few weeks, right? Yeah. Girl, like, but it's <laughs> well, then, Yeah, but if they if they d- announced the engagement later, they wouldn't get like a reality show quite so quick. You know what I mean? Like, That's if you've true. only been together for a short time, it's more controversy, right? Plus, yeah, what's going right. to piss mom off more? Right. Oh, I, I, I heard she was like, yeah. chasing, like a something million dollar deal to appear on exactly. Keeping Up with the Kardashians. Yeah. Yeah. So, you don't think that mom special. is actually partially masterminding that? Yeah. Absolutely. I do. I do. If, if Absolutely. mom sold her daughter's sex tape, <laughs> mom would set this up. That's my personal opinion. Like, how are you going to bring it back? How are you going to bring it back? Kind of. It's, it's all right? about the money. And publicity. Uh, I think I, I would agree with that too. But uh, what you know? Again, what do I really know about <laughs> these people? It's fine. Where should what happen? Oh, all right. We, we, have to we did a we rotation. Did a rotation. Uh, is that what happened? Okay. We got Trayvon Williams. We have Trayvon Williams now. Welcome, we, welcome. We, we, you know, like I said, we are full family in here today. <laughs> that we that is switch on up. I'm gonna I'm get switched over with somebody yeah. too. Right. Is that like that up in here? That was a quick switch. You can't hear us. Period. You Talk. Can you hear us? Yeah. Oh, well, what these. Well, we can hear you. Okay. Yeah, that's your mic. Yeah. Okay. So now we can hear you. Awesome. All right. Well, speaking of family, maybe you guys are going out with your families this weekend and want to go to the movies. Maybe. 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 What's the movies? Are you going to go uh, I'm going to see movies? The Jungle Book. Okay. Well, after you see The Jungle and Book. And. What else? Oh, right. you're going to see Jungle Book and you're going to go see The Barbershop, The Next Cut, y'all. Yeah. It's out this weekend. Ice Cube is back. Malcolm D. Lee directed. It was actually a really cute movie. I love you said actually. Oh, that's, such a little, that's such a funny shade. Well, shade. Yeah, it's a little shade. Actually. It's not shade. And it's a, no, it's a sequel. Actually, it's a sequel, I'm y'all. Sure. It's a sequel, <laughs> and you never quite know how it's going to go. And it's a long time later. And it's yeah. a long yeah. time later. I forget when Barbershop came out. It's it got, was uh, early 2000s. 2000, 2000, yeah. Something. And it's got but a lot of people in this cast. It's too. got a lot of people in this cast. Ice Cube is back. Common is back. Missed him. He, oh, <laughs> so then I got a little crush on Common. Right. I'm thinking. Who's a little crush on I know. Did they, have a, did they have like a, a bring back to the apple juice with Eve? Uh, a little bit. You get the apple juice comment. Eve is yeah. back. She's back. She's doing she really well. The, the shop is doing really well. And they have some new surprises. We got Nicki Minaj in the cast, who was also quite entertaining. I'm and sure. uh, they definitely kind of tackle the issues of sort of what's going on on the south side of Chicago right now. And it was a very enjoyable look. And you guys should check it out this weekend. For right sure. on. And after you check that out, I got one more for you. For those of you who are obsessed with the fashion world, or if you're just obsessed with art, as I am, you can also go check out The First Monday in May, which is a documentary about the Met Ball last year, which was themed China Through the Looking Glass. And it basically follows... Uh, Anna Wintour and all of the planners of the Met Ball for the entire year leading up to last year's um, mm-hmm. gala and you see how they planned it out and what how they chose what they chose and how they worked with different Chinese designers and all kinds of, it was the 
best thing I've seen in a long time. Really? Oh, it it's called, it's called The First Monday in May. You should definitely check it out. If you oh, what's this year's theme? interesting. I don't know what this year's theme is yet. Mm. So, but I will look into that because we'll be talking about it on Fashion 411. Uh, All right. So after you check those movies out, then you can look at the news and try to be excited that we thought maybe that we're holding people responsible for the mortgage crisis that happened yeah. in 2008. Uh-huh. Just kidding! <laughs> <laughs> Goldman Sachs, guys. This, uh, on Monday, they, a judgment came down that they were going to basically pay $5 billion in restitution for their actions during the mortgage crisis. Um, to whom are they paying? Well, that's a really entertaining little portion. Okay, so the way that <laughs> the Justice Department worked out this situation with them. So $2.385 billion will be wow. paid in civil monetary penalty to the Justice Department. But the other nearly $2.7 billion of the settlement is the bank is paying for consumer relief and to the attorney general offices in California, Illinois, New York, and several other federal entities. The issue is that that $2.7 billion is basically like a tax deduction. So for what do you mean for Explain Goldman Sachs? It, it, oh. It's kind of complicated and it doesn't entirely make sense because I'm not a financial economic <laughs> person. But um, uh, ABC News uh, 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 Better Market CEO Dennis Kelleher basically said that that amount the corporation can take a corporate tax of 30% and they get to deduct basically almost another billion dollars from the money that, mind you, they made over 32 billion dollars yeah. in one year during the crisis in 2006. Can we use this new math on our taxes? Okay. I, that I wish, still filing I wish, I wish. <laughs> I know. And in the settlement, it included a statement that <laughs> the settlement was not any sort of admission of wrongdoing on behalf of Goldman Sachs, <laughs> even though they clearly stated that they um, told investors basically that they were selling safer securities than they actually were. Right. They were honest, they, and they were fully aware that those were much riskier investments than they were leading their investors to believe. But there was no wrongdoing on their part, and half of that settlement they get to write off as a tax write-off. And let's see, uh, the CEO of Goldman Sachs had this to say, quote, We are pleased to put these <laughs> legacy matters behind us. Since the financial crisis, we have taken a number of significant steps to strengthen our culture, reinforce our commitment to our clients, and ensure our governance oversight and processes are robust. Hmm. So, they took all your money, they ain't really giving it back, and ain't right. nobody going to jail for it, even <laughs> and, though... And they, so and, and they get a big tax break. And they get a tax break. And they're paying like $1 billion less than what they expected that they were supposed to pay originally. So they said that, you know, literally, yep. um, the, you get the fine print on the on the contract is that they're going to pay end up paying less than what yes, we think that they are. Yes, exactly. I'm a little disappointed this is happening. This didn't, um, this, this wasn't under Obama's watch, but I'm a little disappointed that these penalties are going through under, and I, I understand it's not like he can go, you know what, I You're say you anyway. do this. It's got to all go through right. many, many, many yeah. channels. Yes, right. many, and many channels. we live in a country that's a capitalist society, and this is what happens because their theory is if you put them out of business, then everything starts to crumple. So they want to give them to, I, I know, I don't think it would, but I understand why they're doing this, why they're propping them up. But when all that was going on back then, I remember thinking, I want the bailout. I want <laughs> somebody right. to right. bail me out. I want some free money. Yeah, yeah. Well, Everybody wants yeah. money. Exactly. <laughs> Don't we all? When well, they always say it takes like three years for it to circle back mm-hmm. around, for like three to four years. So I guess it's kind of, how long is it? It's been it's about been five. It's been longer than five, that. It's been five. six. They said, yeah, minimum like three to four years before something. it starts to come back around. Now it's, you know, yeah. it's around Other banks time. have had some larger settlements. JP Morgan did 13 billion. Bank of America was at 16 billion, and Morgan Stanley did 7 billion. Yeah. And uh, oh, sorry, Citibank did 7 billion, and Morgan Stanley recently agreed to a 3.2 3. billion. billion. Why do we think it. they got less? Um, maybe they were smaller. Their uh, their portion of the big pot was a little right. bit smaller. But in the end, there's no. They are not legally required to um, let us know basically what portion of those settlements is tax deductible for them. Right. So. It could be all of it. So, and we have no idea. Yay, so, America! Yes. Capitalism still works, guys. <laughs> nice job. It still works. It still works. 
All right. Is that all you have for us today? <laughs> That's Connie? all I got. All right. Well, before we move to the ER Web Story Spotlight of the Week, I want to talk about DraftKings. We've been doing a promotion with them. We started off with fantasy football. Mm -hmm. We went to golf. Uh, we have a special code that we use right now. It's, it's for code GEEK. You just type that in, DraftKings.com, and get your play on with all of their fun stuff. There's up to $2 million in prizes, I believe. A whole bunch of prizes. $2 million. Uh, even up to t some $10 million, some $2 million. Either way, you can win a lot of money. You should uh, let us know if you win some of that money because we'd like to um, have you donate to the BHL fund. Yeah. <laughs> we, will that money, we will take it. But go to DraftKings.com, code name Geek, and get your play on. All right, we're going to move on to the ER Web Story Spotlight of the Week. The ER Web Story Spotlight of the Week. All right, this next story not only makes me uh, smile, it makes me twitch. also twitch. Yes, that's a good word. <laughs> twitch. Uh, this is probably one of the most complicated stories that we've had in the last uh, several... Complicated? <laughs> yes, I would say complicated stories in the last half of the year. Uh, Rachel Dolezal, mm -hmm. who was in the news obviously last year for claiming to be an African-American woman <laughs> and working for the NAACP chapter in Spokane, Washington, and she was outed as a born white woman um, who identifies with African Americans and has since, you know, went into a media frenzy. And we kind of last, probably since the top of the year, we haven't heard a lot from Rachel as much. Nah. Um, I mean, but we, 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 she, was she was braiding hair. Yeah, she was braiding hair and, and, she was pregnant. and pregnant. And she did recently have a baby. Langston Atticus. Langston Atticus. <laughs> Look at you knowing your Rachel Dull is all facts. Um, well, well, she, you're welcome. <laughs> she, Thank you. She has appeared in the news again, but this time she has appeared because she has written a book that she is going to oh, be putting out soon, yeah. and it's on race equality. Oh, oh white person's yeah, writing a book. Soon. Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> I would love to get the opinion of mm -hmm. most people in this room and find out exactly what you think of her book and would you buy it. Let's start off with Trayvon right here. Uh, I would buy it just because she's a very interesting person. And just what for, makes her interesting to you actually? Just because of like her actually going through that whole phase of wanting to be black and like actually going to that lens like to, that far to be black I just feel like she really really identifies with us I guess in, in a sense. So I'm curious to see what she puts in a book like I think it would be very very detailed. So you are okay with giving her the pass? She get a pass from you? I mean she got a pass from a lot of people from the NCAAP, so I don't but know that's, that's, when she was, <laughs> that's when she was passing, though. So somebody, but they, all the paperwork they do and all the stuff you got to do just to get that position, right. somebody knew, so they gave yeah. a pass. But it's not like you really have a, like a black card. You pull out and like, here's my black card. Right. See, I was born like, African American. This is she was trying to create. Was she trying to create change though? She, it's not like she was just trying to do it to be cool. I think that she wanted to actually do something to make a change. So I give yeah. you that. So if I, I would have, I don't have a. So you were never we offended just, by anything that she did in this process. We just live in. The I'm not where... offended personally. <laughs> not I, offended. I'm not. You know, but I actually, weirdly enough, I kind of, I, in the beginning I was like, oh, that's so offensive, she's so weird. And now I, I'm, I'm back yeah. around to kind of how you think, to be honest. Like, she's a volunteer, according to Langston Hughes, she'd be a volunteer Negro. Like, someone yeah. who volunteers to take on the black struggles. Now, she, I, I don't think it was right to say, to claim being black and work for the NAACP, taking away a job from a black person. But other than that, she actually has brought a lot of uh, conversation. Mm -hmm. to she this does. issue. Well, we have a little clip here that we have that she was speaking with the Today Show about her book, so we'll play that for you right now. About that. You'll be writing a book, and mm -hmm. you'll be talking about and having an opportunity to really get into some of the complexities of racial identity. Yeah. What are you hoping to say? What are you hoping to explain? What are you hoping to shed light on? Well, Savannah, a lot of people have reached out to me over the past year, which has been another kind of bright spot in this, is I've heard a lot of stories from people around the world about um, their, you know, lives being somehow caught between boundary lines of race or culture, ethnicity. And so this larger issue of, you know, if you don't fit into one box um, and if you don't stay there, you know, your whole life um, being identified from birth, you know, as, as who you are. So... What, you know, what does that look like? And because race is such a contentious issue, um, because of the painful history of racism, you know, so race created, didn't create racism, but racism created race. So I think it's important to really think through a lot of those um, kind of topics and questions that people have, and that's why this became kind of so um, visible. Well, there you go. Really challenge people to think about identity. And well, I hope the book's, more, I hope the book's more interesting than like that little clip, by this the way. Because that was a little today? dull. This was today? No, I think this was this yesterday. Was yesterday, actually, yeah. Uh, why is her hair still like that? Like, it's like, it's <laughs> over. We know who you are. Listen, why, she's for me. Um, <laughs> you know, it's like, I think I even, it's, it's, it's so absurd. This, her, this whole thing is absurd. You know, she's, you're not feeling she it. She could have, no, not at all. Uh, <laughs> 
she could have uh, helped and and done all the things that she did as a as a white woman as True she that. was born. You know, like I can't be like, well, you know, I don't feel like being, you know, uh, in my financial. I'm, I, I don't identify with my financial situation anymore. I identify, <laughs> I identify with millionaires. <laughs> That's why I feel like who I am inside as a person. I'm, I'm a millionaire, so you know, where's my money? You know, I say like, you can't do that. You know, it's like it's. It, I think she's absurd, and this is absurd. So okay, you, would, it, so you would not be buying the book. No. Does, no. does anyone ever think like the one thing I thought about her is what if like past lives and and like you know Buddhists believe in past lives and and reincarnation. What if she really was like a black woman? Okay, yeah, yeah, that's, welcome Courtney's, to this life. Yeah, that me. was yeah, okay. Yeah, if that's that's true. True. just smacked me with her eyes. If that's true, that was like past <laughs> life. Right. This is, bro, we talking about right now, I and mean, she is a white woman right now. I look, I look at it like I'm I'm Greek. But at the same time, being gay and Greek, I couldn't relate to anyone in my entire family. So I s- went out and I basically befriended. I, I mean, I feel like I know more about African American history than I do about Greek history. Right. 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 About, to be but I'm not gonna go around and be like, <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm from. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I know I'm no, Greek. I, I know where I stem I from. I hear you. And part of the part of why I don't try to speak in a more urban <clears throat> accent is because I didn't speak like that. So I don't want to do that just so people go, "You're black," or "Yes, you are." That would be. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, like for me to like come in with cornrows every day and be like, yo, I'm down. Like, right. You know what right. I mean? Tan my skin to, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, I there, she could have re- really do amazing, could have done really amazing things. And maybe she still can. Uh, there's just this taint on her right now. And right. also yeah. we live in a society. You said taint. I know. I knew <laughs> someone was going to take it there. Taint. Well, taint. Her, her hair looks African-American. Yeah, That's what I'm saying. Why is she still wearing it like that? We all she, know who you are. Let's like, stop. There's she a lot it. of Jewish women with just as curly No, my aunt's hair. That's not black. She did that, She's not Jewish. She wasn't Jewish. No, she looks Irish. She was like lily white lady, but... Uh, yeah, I think it would have been awesome if she had done it as an experiment that had an end date. Like if she had been like, <laughs> like, like, like right, you got like me, like been like, all right. So uh-huh. she wanted to have the experience. Of so being she African because American. I do think there is some power in walking in those okay, shoes right. to yeah. understand okay. what it is like to receive attention based on this color of your skin right. and to yeah. really have an understanding. And if that was your goal, like that was your end game, like I really want to understand what this culture experiences and what they go through. You have to walk in those shoes. Right. So had she been like, yeah, this might experiment from like 18 to 25 I'm good okay now I know how I can better serve and my voice is that much more powerful because I've walked in the shoes and I have the power of my white skin privilege to do right. that so right. she missed an opportunity and that's why it just becomes effery and a joke like it like right. she, she was gonna take it to the grave you know like, what I'm saying she like, was, she was, she was nobody ever right. knew was, like no like, she would she would have been no, you're like right. you know, she, Black history, huh. black history books and stuff. Yeah. Like, like Barack Obama and her, like right. Okay. <laughs> you're right. If she, if she you presented know. it as a art, you're right. If she done it as, and this is an artist yeah. experiment, like a Jay Z, Mark, what was like the, Tyra Banks, which were the fats. The fats. That's right. right. Stina, what you guys say? I, I feel like you got something over there you want to say. I, I think that her, I think she feels for the African American community, that she's going about it the wrong way. Yeah. And as a disabled person who's also Greek, um, we face a lot of the same issues that African Americans face. Yeah. And Americans don't understand that. But the black community does. So everybody says, why are you with the black community so much? It's because they're more welcoming. Yeah. And they understand. And there's a simpatico there. Exactly. I mean, our, our opening song is We Are Family. So, I mean, yeah, you're right. No, exactly. I, I have a question for Stephen, which is I've seen documentaries on people who um, perceive them, they, they're able by everything right. that works, but they choose to portray themselves as people who need to be in wheelchairs. You've seen, right, you know what yeah, I'm talking yeah, yeah, about, yeah, right? Yeah. What do you think about people like that? But they say that identify as someone who doesn't have a leg, doesn't have mobility, or doesn't... Mental it's almost like health. the same situation. You say it's mental illness? Mental health issues. Mental health issues. Which is a disability. Yeah. That's true. We should, you know, uh, you know, not understand that and help it, but it's a disability. You're not wrong because someone who cuts their leg off, there are people whose legs yeah. work, but they have them cut off so that right. they will then yeah. need a chair. Yeah. That is that's just, really. That's, I mean, you know, there's, listen, there's people who do, every, every, there's a little niche of everyone yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Right. I know people right. that cut their legs off to get taller. 
Oh, you mean who's who cut the bone and then stretch it? Oh, out. Yeah, that's a little. Taller. Well, we'll oh. do anything for vanity, won't we? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that so there's that. Painful, but but that, that is that's trying to fit in. This is. I think you're right that it is a mental illness or it's something with their head it's trip. Nothing to be ashamed about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We should accept it mm -hmm. and treat it. I agree. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're not really I mean, big on treating mental health issues we're, in we're, this country. Yeah, we're, we're, we need yeah. To treat yeah I was going to say, we got to treat a lot we of things. There's a, a long line of things we, we need to should. treat. I, I'm kind of with Kier on this. I, I mean, I, I I applaud her efforts of, I know they say that she's helped a lot of things when she was in the, in the NAACP, but she just is, her tactic on um, what she did and how she did it. Uh -huh. and. and faking who she really was. Yeah, I'm with you. If she had just said, hey, I am a white woman. How can we call you authentic? Can, how can, yeah, it's like I don't trust anything you say. No. But I do feel like I kind of want to see see what's in this book, though. I yeah, am a little it, interested. That's all I'm saying. Book. I didn't say she was right. I know she's <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. right. I'm just saying I, will, I just want to see what she has to say about it. Like, right. I know it's more, the book's going to be way more detailed on probably mm -hmm. how she did it. Yeah. Because somebody hired her. You can't fake your social security number. You can't fake a, right. lot, can't fake a lot of the stuff. So somebody can't fake your taxes. I'm, saying. So I'm yeah. just curious to see what's going on. But, is there, but you can put other. You can you can say right. you don't have to put your ethnic race. and right. You know you don't have to put that on a sheet. So how would they know? Because my sister looks about like that, but cuter uh, <laughs> so you know there's nowhere where people would go well what are you because she could my sister could be israeli or jewish mm. or all right. these different things yeah. but mm. she's a light-skinned mixed girl black girl so how would they know well, i would say you research people that has when you hire somebody in that type of position you do your research on a person though yeah. you know i'm saying somebody should have knew something about this somebody knew but see, if she rolled into my uh, shop, I would think that's a light-skinned black sure. or Puerto Rican girl. I mean, she fooled everybody. Yeah, she fooled everybody. Yeah, she fooled everybody. She was passing like, she what was what college was, age, but, right? But I mean, that, but that's no surprise. What was lunchroom so like at NAACP the day after life? <laughs> Did y'all know? But how far that? back? I want to know how far back the perm goes. You know what I mean? Because no one pulled out the picture from high school when yeah, she had yeah, the straight hair. I don't you know think it was mean? freshman year of college. I think I saw a picture of her looking kind of white, and then by sophomore yeah. year she was kind of black. Because then she go to Howard or something, she and right that's what made her yeah. transition to like yeah. I think that's it was transition. Wow. Transition. Well, it'll be interesting to see. I have a feeling we will not be seeing the last of Rachel Dolezal, and um, hey, she's famous. I just now. hope it's more dynamic than that clip was because I was kind of dull. Yeah. Yes. It was you a little know? dull. But she's still weird with interviews, too. I've, if you watch the whole thing, I think there's a couple questions an, that she... Yeah, it's problem. an insecurity. She's still a little bit weird with some of that stuff. All right, well, we're going to move on. We actually we, were going to cover... We were going to cover one more story. We're going to go right to the cast of The Autograph. Let's talk about this, this TV series here. First, let's start off with everyone's role in the movie so should we not get the girl we kicked out back in can she come back i thought they pulled her out i thought she left i was saying can i just come in and she just kind of maybe y'all could just share let's start with nazi i don't want to tell us about your character so um i'm playing uh jessica price so uh jessica price is the uh fiance of tyson and he met her overseas and um can you tell us a little about the plot because yeah. we don't know anything about all i know is anonymous uh -huh. like what's the Kid. what's the Kid. the one line what's the show about oh yeah you should ask okay, okay. would somebody can somebody tell yeah. us what the show's about a boot you can get that talk in the mic So oh, yes. I didn't mean to kick him out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're a musical. Yeah, yeah. No, I let you hear, like, what's the pitch line for the, the show? Um, what's I play a character named Tyson Wright. I'm one of the leads. Also, the story is about three friends, three best friends dealing with a lot of internal struggles. So I play, um, we have a friend, that's JJ, he plays the actor. We have Woody, he's the dancer, but he wants to get out of dance, and nobody takes him serious in any other field. So he's dealing with all that stuff. As me playing Tyson, I go back to how like my roots because I get hit out of the NBA because of my height, not because of talent. <laughs> so I have to go back where I all started to get that confidence back, which is uh, Kiers plays my uh, high school mentor and my coach. So Gosh. I go back to, to find to find um, basically that hunger, basically because I want to give up. So what? I rekindle with all my friends, basically. And you, I'm sorry. So you are who? Uh, my fiance. Uh, I'm, I'm playing Jessica Price. I'm his. I'm Tyson's uh, fiance, and he met me overseas and. Um, well, then he brought me to the United States, and um, I was an ex-kindergarten teacher, 
And then uh, when I posted a racy picture online, I became Ooh. social media famous. Oh. Well, Jessica became social media famous. <laughs> and uh, well, Thais never really paid attention to her during the relationship, and she was seeking for other attention. And she was she had like a selfish way, and she wanted things when she wanted, and she just got caught up in all this social media fame. So you're kind of like a Kim uh, Kardashian. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and what about what about your character? Lolly, what? Um, I play Simone, and that's the lead girl's best friend, who um, Janae, um, she's JJ's girlfriend. On yeah. the low, am I allowed? To? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. yeah. Are you the side chick? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, not. I, I'm, I'm the very good, loyal best ah, friend. I see. She doesn't want to give too much. She doesn't want to give too much. Stay with your character. I play Rex. Trey is an old professor mm. in high school. And I'm his mentor. And I teach him about life and the meaning of life through our interaction. Mm. Sweet. Thank you. He's also um, in the. I'm not even gonna cut you off, but he also is in the gym a lot with us as well. He works yeah. closely with uh, my coach. Yeah. Right. Yeah, the coach. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm. Uh, yeah, like he said, I play his uh, high school coach. He comes back to high school to kind of uh, find his roots, find where you know, find the hunger again, find out who he was before he went. And, you know, got lost, and so uh, you know, we have a, a little interaction, and uh, you know, uh, I kind of uh, put him uh, back through the uh, <laughs> through, through the trenches again. You know, having him work out, and you know, and and, and uh, do some exercises on the court and stuff, and just uh, so I mean, it was cool because I'm actually. <laughs> I, I met Trey. Uh, I'm his. I was. I am his acting coach. I was his acting coach. Yeah. Um, oh wow! <clears throat> at yeah. the uh, I had to have him D on. Dustin Felder Actor Studio, um, and uh, he, you know, we took a class with me. And then, like after, you know, after a while, he was like, "Hey man, I got this thing. I got this part. You know, for the show, I'm making. And, uh, <laughs> I want you to come be." And I'm like, All right, "Man, cool, no doubt." You know, because he was always a real. He's a good dude, man, and talented, uh, young, funny actor. And so. Uh, you know, so it was like we kind of stepped right into it. Like it was easy because we had already been through the kind of yeah. coach, you know, student yeah. kind of thing. Super excited. So yeah. how, how did you get your financing for uh, this? Well, I raised some money, but a lot of it is paid for by me. Um, I pay for it through my company because uh, I'm doing the show through my production company that I just started, the Pioneers Collectors LLC. So I'm pretty much producing. I'm paying for everything, the locations, everything. Wow. So you like the new Nate but, Parker jumping off right yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like the funding game things. going. Yeah. This is the first thing on my company, but I'm doing a cartoon as well. I'm working on a lot of different things. Yeah. Now, this movie is also about a journey for each one of the characters. Yeah. And what, what would you say is something that you learned, each one of you learned, while on this journey playing your role in this, in this TV series? Uh, I learned just about not, not giving up. Like, you always have to, sometimes you have to stand back from everything and just say, man, how did I get to this point? Like, how can I get back to what I love? Because you kind of lose the love for something when it's not going your way. You know, you kind of want to quit. It's easy to quit. So for me, it was just like, this is going to show me. Like, just in life, period. Like, you don't give up, man. You just got to figure out, find your way again. I feel that. What about you? Um, I think it's, basically about friendship for my character which sounds really cheesy but then it is about I don't I think loyalty is hard to come by and so um and there is this like perception that with groups of girls you can't really be true friends and there's this um bitchy stereotype which isn't always necessarily the case so I think it is about the intricacies of friendship I feel that Stephen to me it's about diversity and being valued for who you are rather than what you are. Mm. Yeah. And I Getting think, deep over there. <laughs> yeah. And I think um, the coach and myself and Trey send a message that's really timely mm -hmm. in the industry. I feel that. Yeah. Nadia? Um. Well, Jessica, she's just thirsty for attention. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what you say, you get to have all the fun, yeah. right? all the fun parts of the show, right? Yes. <laughs> so you're from Germany originally? Uh, yes, originally from Germany. Gotcha. How, how, well, you're working here. Do you, are you just planning on staying? Oh, I've been here for a while. I'm, I became a U.S. citizen. Oh, oh yeah. congratulations. And you as well. You are I'm, I'm staying actually, here? I'm actually, I was born in New York, so I'm actually oh, uh, well, American. We so, 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 like, so I'm Nigerian and American, and then I lived in England. Do you have a double passport? Yeah. Oh, that's fabulous. <laughs> oh. And, then, and then, Kier, we wanted to get your response to that last oh, question, too. Um, I, I think with Coach Blackwell, uh, you know, it's, it's about striving for excellence. Um, and, I mean, even with this whole project, you know, it's, um, 
it's, it's very important, and, I, and I'm very, very proud of Trey, um, because um, owning, as black people in America, you know, owning our own images, creating our own images is just the most important thing you can ever do in, in this in this business, in, in this industry. And he is, you know, he's created these characters, he's created this show, you know, he's got a cartoon, so he's doing, he's doing so many things that, you know, like, a, a lot of people don't have the, the courage or the mindset um, or the discipline to do. And he's doing that. And uh, I think that that's, like, the most important thing that's coming out of this. Um, you know, it, it, we we want uh, variety, we want diversity um, in, in our images and what we see. You know, it's like, it, it, there's nothing wrong with hood movies. You know, there's nothing wrong with, you know, like, stereotypical images every now and then. But it's like, that's not all we want to see because that's not right. all we are. Right. So it's I, like, I also you know, think that's changing because I saw an ad for a Sony movie and yeah. it was all black actors, right? But you could tell this was not a low budget. Like, we okay, we've got a million dollar budget, black people in this movie thriller. No, 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 no. Uh, it's coming out in September and it's called Bow Break so it's kind of a silly thriller but yeah, I was like oh oh, they've spent as good. much money on this as they did like a Fatal Attraction exactly. did you notice mm -hmm. the production Absolutely. values and I thought that's a great sign for us because that means things like yours will get a little more attention, attention because they're starting to take they're realize we have stuff. spending money as black mm -hmm. African Americans in this country and we also are very creative as are you yeah. Yeah. thank you thank and you, you. Yeah, I just want to say the reason why, when I even cast it for the show um I was looking for that. Like, I, I, in my everyday life, I love everybody the same. So when I was casting, like, this is not going to be a, I don't have a percent saying something wrong with all black cast, but I wanted to sh the diversity. Like, you, you have like to, if you have life. a problem with stuff, you have to be the change. Like, I don't want to sit around and complain about it. This is my way of, of doing that. So everything that I do, I include uh, Steve, you know, with the disability. He stayed persistent. I liked it. I didn't care if he's in a wheelchair or not. Right. And he, sh he showed up. He did. He did really well. So this is about giving opportunities to people. Yeah. I wanted to create good footage for everybody. I want, there's certain things that I wanted to do. And I had a certain vision for it, and now it's happy to bring it to life. Like, it's really incredible. I think everybody's going to love the show. Did you direct it as well? No, I'm not directing. Malcolm Lex is directing. He's a, a young director in L.A. He's working on all, pretty much all my stuff. He's the first director on my company, so he'll be working with a lot of stuff. Well, we have awesome. to wrap up, but where can fans find out more about the movie and, or the TV show and what the, find out all of your social media Well, we release it in, well. we're releasing in June. Um, the miniseries is going to be on YouTube initially, but the actual season I'm already uh, pitching to Netflix and Hulu. So that, that actual season we picked up from one of those companies, and then you'll get to see that. That'll be later on in the year. And you can follow me at Trey, T R A Y underscore underscore Williams, um, autographs, at autographs, the series on uh, Instagram. Okay. So you can find it. Lolia? Um, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at liaetomi.com, so L-I-A-E-T-O-M-I.com. Can you just say that again so I can hear your voice? Okay, no, no, no. Steven Jenkins at Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Twitter, 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 Instagram, Snapchat, at Nasia underscore Jansen, like N-A-S-I-A -A underscore J-A-N-S-E-N. -E Courtney? I'm everywhere at Stuart Starlet. Rachel? Oh, wow. I'm like every, <laughs> a Rachel, at Rachel True on Twitter and True Rachel True on Instagram, and I'm so not on Snapchat, so don't even <laughs> <laughs> You can find me at Daryl Kristen on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and you can find DJ Jesse J everywhere, because he's on every show all the time. Show, all the time. <laughs> really looking forward to day. seeing your series, you guys. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations yeah. for autographs, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thank, Thank you. you. Check Thanks. it out. From executives Kevin Undergaro, Dario Kristen, Tiana Hobson, and the entire BHL staff, we would like to thank you for supporting Black Hollywood Live, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African American entertainment. For questions and comments, contact us. Info at BlackHollywoodLive.com. Like us on Facebook, tweet us, or Instagram us at BHL Online. And I am the official voice of Black Hollywood Live, Scipio, Instagram at KingXOBay. Thanks for tuning in. The views expressed here are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of BHL or its owners or principals.